This is exactly right. Hello. Hi. And welcome. This is my favorite murder. This is the mini The mini episode. That's right. You can tell by the time is shorter. And the and the day. And what we talk about. Also, we just said it, so you can tell by that. <laughs> God, why don't I explain everything? Look, we've said it, listen, at least one time. This is the mini-sode. <laughs> we read yours. Do mm-hmm. you want me to start? There'll be you a will, test You're forced to say yes, <laughs> because it's a leading question. <laughs> what are you going to do? Fight me on it? Yes. Oh, is today the day? <laughs> <laughs> Tank guy drove through my neighborhood. <gasps> Dear Karen, George, and friends, I was recently listening to your live show in San Diego, and Karen mentioned that she had covered the tank dude that drove through uh, Claremont in the previous night's show. I have hometown letters saved on my computer about that very incident, and I knew then I should have sent it in months ago instead of sitting on it, thinking it just wasn't good enough. Don't sit on your story. Look. Don't judge your own story. How how would you know? We'll judge it for you. You're the giver, not the receiver. You don't know. (laughs) Anyway, my best friend and I, it literally says that. Oh. Anyway, my best friend and I were 14 at the time and apparently totally clueless as to how much meth was in our neighborhood. <laughs> Looking back on it now, the guy who would cut his grass using a pair of scissors totally makes sense to me. <laughs> it was the day after school and like always, my best friend Kim called me. But this time, it wasn't to talk shit about the kids we went to school with. This time, it was because a motherfucking tank had just driven down her cross street what? and was headed towards my house. Oh my God. Of course, I didn't believe a goddamn word she was telling me, so she told me to turn on the news. We both saw it, that it was headed towards my house, and we begged and pleaded our parents to let us go watch it destroy our neighborhood. Yeah. Our parents were, of course, totally against the idea, one of the few times my parents were actual parents. So we had to watch the whole thing together on the phone while watching the news. Mm. As you know, eventually the cops did get the tank to stop on the freeway, and they shot and killed him right there inside the tank. I remember the city of San Diego was collectively sad and angry about his demise. And that night on the radio, the DJ at 91X dedicated the song I Fought the Law and the Law (gasps) One by The Clash to the Tank Man. Our neighborhood wasn't terribly destroyed, but he did run up onto some people's uh, yards. So for months afterwards, you could see tank tracks in the front lawns and crushed fences that he had run into. Anyway, love your podcast. I live in Portland, Oregon now, and I work from home as an illustrator, so I spend 99.5% of my time alone. But you kind of make it feel like I have some cool, some of the coolest co-workers love Claire. Aww. Claire from Claremont. Claire from Claremont. I feel like if it was a car chase, yeah, don't go out and watch it. But it's a tank. It's You can jump out of its way 10 minutes before it hits you. Georgia, you'd like to think that. You would like to think (laughs) that. Do I not know tanks? You don't know tank hypnosis, (laughs) which is what happens to you when you jump out into the street. (laughs) It lasts a half an hour hour before the tank runs you You just keep staring at it going, no fucking way, it's a tank. (laughs) It's just so cool. Uh, We'll have to post that episode or that live show on the fan cult. Yes. Your story is incredible. That's a good, well, it's that story, any, like, you could get a computer... You know how on YouTube you can make a video of a yeah. computer talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just have a computer tell you that story and it would be the best story you've ever heard. Give yourself more credit than that. You are better than a talking computer. I can't. <laughs> the damage is so deep. So and deep. So permanent. So deep. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go. Let's start heavy. I'm going to do. Um, okay, this one's called Hometown and a Half. Great. And it, it addresses us, dude. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I want to tell you about a strange death in my hometown of Knoxville, Illinois. Uh, it was far before my time, but I'd always heard about it growing up. This is the mummy house. Oh. Carl Stevens was diagnosed with diabetes at age 10. He married Carol in 1966. I'm guessing after he was 10. I, I would hope. Yeah. They had two kids, Cindy and Craig. They obviously fucking love the letter C. In the 70s, they... <laughs> Cindy spelled with an S. <laughs> what did I say? Cindy. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pronouncing it. In the 70s, they joined a holistic society or a cult, call your dad, and he attempted to treat his diabetes with diets and supplements. In, oh. 1970, yeah, in 1979, he died of diabetic shock face down on his bedroom floor. Surprise, surprise, his wife didn't believe he was dead, but that he was in a coma. His body turned black and swelled up, as you do, and after keeping his body on the floor for two months, no. she propped him up on a chair in the basement. Well, uh, it gets worse. I mean, that's some serious denial. Yeah. Okay. That's like, I am brainwashed. Yeah. 
The family moved him to another bed and regularly changed his clothes and bedding. They also chatted (laughs) with him as if he were still alive. (laughs) Hey, how's the rotting going? (laughs) Stuff like that. Just small talk with a corpse. And I I mean, did he answer? That's the question I want to know. Like, do they they hear? Yeah. Yeah. Like how you talk to your cat. You know, and they respond to you. Okay. They told people he was sick, so that's why he hadn't been seen in a while. But then a family member finally got into the house and found him. They said his bright red hair made him easily recognizable because otherwise he wasn't fucking recognizable. (laughs) His body was kept in the house altogether for almost nine years. What? And a fellow cult member, Richard Kuntz, moved in and cared for the body as well during that whole time. Oh. Okay. Cindy and Richard were both arrested and the kids placed into foster care. I'm sure they were significantly fucked up at this point. Only Carl's mother attended his burial in Wataga, Illinois, another small ass town. I posted about this case on Facebook and someone told me that the opposing teams used to chant Knoxville mummies at sporting events. (laughs) (laughs) That's rude. That's mean. Teenagers know exactly what to say. No bullying. We have a no bullying policy. The fighting mummies. That would actually be the best the fighting mummy the best mascot that's right uh then she writes yikes my brother's aunt also used to cut the stevens family's hair and mine ssdgm <laughs> jamie that's insanity nine years the smell alone when does the smell stop i wonder can can um what are they called you know people in forensics and shit let us know oh when a body stops smelling scientists yeah you know or I just mean, a part of fucking someone who's hanging out. It, there's just so many aspects of it where it's like also, mo- you know, months later moving it. Yeah. I, getting other people. I mean, here, the one thing, and maybe this is just weird of me, but when when you start talking about other people that were kind of came in on it, at least the, whoever was doing it wasn't alone. Yeah. There's something, at least there's like a kind of group... Like, we all were in the same head. We all thought it was normal. I mean, it sucks for the kids, you know? The, like, for the kids, it's uh, unspeakably but it, horrifying. I don't know if it was, like, more of the people from the holistic cult were in on it and acted like that, too. And yes. she just told people outside of it that he was sick. But at least one other adult, yeah, was like, yeah, let's talk to fucking Carl over yes. there. He's, he's, he's still here with us because I believe in vitamins. Oh, let's change his outfit. He's been wearing that outfit. Okay. I mean, the funerals that I've been to and that it's been a lot in our family, like... Even if it's right after the death, the body looks weird. Yeah. It's not, it's disturbing from the get go. Yeah. That, so the idea that you're just going to put somebody in a chair and, and ignore it all. And that's with makeup on that you see them. <laughs> that's right. That's highly treated. Yikes. Not even, I mean, this was a body that still had all of its parts inside. Yeah. Oh, guys. Let's not. Why do we talk about this stuff? Wait, I lost my <laughs> What is wrong with I, us? This is, What's wrong with people who send this stuff to us? I feel like I, I would love to hear from a coroner or, coroner or some type <laughs> corner, of person corner, who would corner. know about what the experience of that would be. That'd be great. All right. This one, the subject line is almost home intrusion. Always call the cops. Oh. Hey, y'all. About a month ago, my best friend calls me at around 1 a.m. and tells me someone's knocking on her door. She says it was a weird type of knock, as if they were tapping the door knocker very light. No! That is... Please bang on the door. The worst thing oh. of all time. Te- 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 Sidebar, te- 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 did we already talk about the guy that licked the doorbell for three hours? We did not. Was it three hours? I just saw a screen grab and a caption, and I was just like, mm-mm. No. He, yeah. I believe it was in LA, right? Same door uh, ringer. It was Nog like a ringer. doorbell or uh-huh. a door. Yes. Something. S- Steven's going to get it and he's going to fill in the, the crucial details. But I, from what I remember, it was a doorbell and he licked it for th- like three hours. Wow. And they, and because they have it on one of those, yeah. like, those front door cameras. Oh, and it's just a guy licking a thing. If I ever get a video camera, you know, security system, I'm going to make some Vince watch it because I don't want to fucking see whatever inevitably really comes on it. Just it's nightmares. Go. So this is in the Sacramento Bee. Oh. A security video shows a stranger approach the front door of a Salinas, California home early Friday, then look directly into the camera before <gasps> proceeding to lick the doorbell for hours. He licked yes. it. He made eye contact. He did it on purpose. Oh. Ooh, it was a ring doorbell camera. Yeah. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Simply yeah. safe. Simply safe. Oh. <laughs> that wouldn't happen with a simply safe. Yeah, they oh. don't say specific hours, but they just say four hours. Great. Four hours. Yeah, I, f- I read that it was three, but who knows? Mm. Okay. So anyway, let's just put that in our back pocket Great. while we listen to this story. Okay, good enough. Okay, so tapping. We're now to the weird light tapping front door. <sighs> horrifying. Um, 
She said she heard it first at 12.45 a.m. and immediately turned off her living room TV and went to the kitchen where you couldn't see her from the front door because her door has windows at the top. Mm. She heard the knocking again at 1 a.m. Mm. So fucking 15 minutes later. She was scared because she wasn't expecting company and whoever it was had stayed for 15 minutes outside her door. <gasps> uh-uh. She tried to call her mom, but she wouldn't answer, so she called me. <laughs> she wouldn't answer. <laughs> she refused. My immediate reaction was all caps. What the fuck, bitch? Call the fucking yeah. cops. She thought I was overreacting. I tell her, no, you live alone, and someone could easily figure that out. Call the motherfucking cops. Still refusing, I texted our other best friend and started a conference call. Then I put them on hold mm. while I called the cops. Yes. She was insistent that it wasn't necessary, but my favorite murder didn't raise no fool. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I called the Huntsville police and asked them to run a welfare check on my friend. Wow, that's genius. Yeah. She had been hearing weird knocks on her front door and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Within five minutes, yes. the police were there and she felt more comfortable. We mostly forgot about the incident. What? Well, it turns out I wasn't overreacting. Oh my God. Oh my God. There has been a guy breaking into women's homes and watching them while they sleep. <gasps> he had broken into some other girl's apartment eight days after the knocking at my friend's door three doors down from what? her apartment. My guess is, is that his fucking creep was probably knocking lightly to see if anyone was awake. And after this incident, I su- subscribed her to the show. <laughs> <laughs> and now she can stay sexy and call the motherfucking cops herself. Love y'all, Mel. Mel, good work. Oh, no. Mel gets, you're a, um, what's it called when little kids get police badges? Honorary. You're an honorary you're the, member. You're the sheriff's assistant. Yeah. Um, hold, also, if you live in not a huge metropolitan city. Yeah. Um, I would imagine, especially if you're young, uh, young, free, single women in, in your town, call those cops. Yeah, they'll Cause there's gonna be some young men oh. with the, with the dedication to service. And great and, skin, clean and, shave. Every right. Day. And kind of like a fire in their eyes. Yeah. Like, I'll fucking get that guy. And they're young enough to like, they joined for a reason and they still, they're not old and like, I hate this now. No. They're like hot and young with a purpose. They're still in the like, hold your flashlight up by your ear yeah. kind of mode. They still call cars V. Vehicles. <laughs> They're into it. Let them do their job. They like it. Do it. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80. it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80. Goodbye. Let's do this one. I was almost killed by a door. Oh, shit. The worst kind. Yeah. Dear murder crew and furry friends. My dad and I like to swap crazy stories to see if we can outdo each other. He usually wins since he has been stabbed twice (gasps) and chased by a lion. Shit. One night we were doing this. (laughs) That is awesome. <laughs> is, he, is he that like uh, that cartoon commander that's like when in my day <laughs> <laughs> he got chased by two lions and stabbed twice with nothing. That guy, what was it from Rocky and Bullwinkle? Oh forget yeah, yeah, it, yeah, forget yeah. It. One night we were doing this and I was talking about the time a door fell on me. My dad got quiet and told me not to joke about it, and I asked why. 
I was seven at the time, so I didn't remember every detail, but basically my parents worked in an open office type place and they were splitting up the hallway by installing a door. The specific instructions were do not run through the hallway <laughs> since the door frame, since the frame and door was there, but the hinges weren't on yet. Well, I ran through the hallway chasing my dogs and they were both able to slip through the door. I wasn't and the door fell on me. I was crying because it ended with a broken leg. Oh, shit. But my dad was screaming frantically not to move. I wanted to turn and look at him, but he was actually yelling at the top of his lungs not to move. And I didn't know why until about a year ago when I was 18. The door had a coat hook on it that had just barely pierced my neck. If I had turned to look at my dad, I would have effectively impaled myself and severed one of the major arteries in my neck. (gasps) My My dad confessed when he first started yelling. It was in hope because he thought I was already dead. (gasps) Fuck off, universe, because I'm still alive. (laughs) Anyway, right. stay sexy and don't run through uninstalled doors, Levi. <laughs> Perfect Amazing. advice. Amazing. Oh, my God. I love that story so much. The shit we did as kids that almost got us killed constantly. Also, the shit where when you're hurt, if you just don't know what's happening, right. it doesn't hurt as bad. Totally. Like, it's, I know I've told you the story, but when my mom worked in Santa Rosa, which was north of Petaluma, and she was going down the freeway and she saw a guy flip his truck right. and walked up. And it, the truck was upright when she got to it, but the um, windshield was broken. And when she got up to the guy, it was like a pg e type truck. And the guy was sitting facing forward, and he had a little bit of blood on his, like, head oh, or whatever. And my mom said, I'm a nurse. Um, uh, is there anything? Do you hurt anywhere? Do you need to tell me, like, how you, whatever, yeah. what's going on? And he went... I think I'm fine. I mean, my head hurts a little bit. And then as he was saying that, he turned to her and he had a huge piece of glass embedded in in his forehead. But he just didn't know it. Did he die? Because he was in shock. No, no, no. He was fine. He was fine. It was was like, you know, it was, it's a skull. So it was just like a thing that like was sticking there, but it all happened so fast. That sounds like a nightmare. Uh Uh-huh. And then this is, it's the craziest story, but it's one of those family ones. My mom was in her nurse's whites when she was talking to the guy. So when she turned away to walk back to her car, she had blood on the (gasps) front of because it was on his door. And then our family friend and Lily was driving up the freeway, sees my mom walking down the freeway with blood on her and thinks that she was in the accident. Yeah, and she's going crazy. She pulls over. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh. Um, small town fun. Oh, is it me? It's you. Last one. Okay. I'm not gonna read you this one because it gives the whole it gives it all away. Okay. Okay, and there's no greeting, which I respect the most. In 1968, there was a hit and run in the city of Fulton, New York, not to be confused with Fulton, Montgomery County. I was never. (laughs) Thank God, because I was right on the verge. This person had been driving down the main road in the city on Halloween night and had hit and killed a four-year-old girl named Carol Lee Ashby, who was crossing the street with her older sister. Yeah, I mean... Heartbreaking. Her body was thrown 133 feet and the driver took off and was never (gasps) caught. Monster. Horrifying. 44 years later in 2013, a man named Douglas Parkhurst confessed to the murder but was not charged as the statute of limitations had expired. It said that he might have been drunk and thought he hit a dog. (gasps) Uh, Apparently, he had never apologized to the family directly. Here's where it gets wild. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Douglas Parkhurst had since moved to Portland, Maine, where he lived with his family. In 2018, he was at his grandchildren's Little League game (gasps) when all of a sudden, a woman named Carol Shero drunkenly drove through (gasps) the field gate and was driving recklessly on the field with children on it. the fuck? There are a couple different accounts of what happened next, but Parkhurst was either in the midst of pushing children out of the way or closing the gate to the field when when Shero struck him and killed him. (gasps) He was the only person that died. Cheryl has since been charged with manslaughter and previously charged with two DUIs. If you didn't notice, the little girl Parkhurst killed was named Carol Lee, and he was killed by a woman named Carol. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm fucking chilled. And they think he was drunk, and she was drunk. I'm still in awe of this story. It might actually be aired on ESPN as they did an excerpt surrounding Parkhurst's heroic sacrifice, quote unquote, at the Little League game. Thank you for reading my story. Stay sexy and don't drink and drive. Do not. Autumn. (gasps) It's so crazy how like the the tainting of a thing you do will always taint. (laughs) 
<laughs> there's just taints everywhere. It's really true. It's like your life is covered in taints. That's, I mean, but that's why I'm so careful when I'm taking a left and look, I always check that fucking crosswalk. The last thing you want to do, like I've said this before, mm-hmm. but if a bunch of cars are stopped and you go around yeah. them to speed past, yeah. you might want to consider their stop for a reason. Right. And before you gun it through, check the crosswalk and make sure people aren't stopping for people crossing because totally. that's how people have killed like children crossing the street <sighs> and it is a nightmare that's it's horrifying that's really good advice <laughs> thanks no i mean it <laughs> i mean i really mean it that's really good advice karen but it's actually like the best advice <laughs> and i just say that i'm just a kind okay this last one i have is called i almost got my dad arrested on suspicion of murder oh hi karen nope hi georgia karen steven and various furry friends I was a particularly precocious toddler, a.k.a. very easily bored and very hard work. And one time when I was about two or three, my uncle was uh, meant to keeping an eye on me, but probably wasn't giving me his full attention. Somehow I got a hold of the house phone and rang 999. Are you in Australia? (laughs) And spoke to the emergency services. When the operator asked where my mummy and daddy were, I said that my mummy had been gone for ages and my daddy was in the garden digging a very big hole. Oh, my God. (laughs) Being quite rightly suspicious of this, they sent round a police officer to my house to see what the hell was going on and to question my dad. (laughs) Turns out that my dad was simply digging a pond in the garden while my mom was just at work. (laughs) They also had to ring the nursing home where my mom worked to make sure that my dad was legit. They, the police, didn't seem to see the funny side of it, and I got a very stern telling off from my mom and dad, although now it's one of their favorite stories to tell. Stay sexy and don't let toddlers ring the emergency (laughs) services, Lucy. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> thank god it, it turned out that way because it the real version of what they thought was possibly happening is so bone chillingly horrifying and actually is like the the teacher's pet podcast is like the story of it yeah that's right <laughs> you know it's <laughs> right. like that is digging the, fucking, the pool digging that's in right. the pool right mom's yeah. been gone for a long time Oy vey. Okay. um send us your emails my favorite murder at gmail we just like good stories it doesn't matter what it's about we just love to podcast your minis we do truly um yeah and stay sexy and don't get murdered goodbye, goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie <laughs>